In this session, we are going to see the taxability of income from house property from section 22 to 27 of Income Tax Act 1961. So this session deals with the definition of the ed, exempted incomes from house property, determination of annual value, deduction under section 23 and 24, format for calculating house property income. The first one is land and building attached there too. The taxability of this lies with residential house, bungalow, docks or warehouse, any block of bricks or stones covered by a roof is called as building. Land is not taxable under this ed, it is taxed under the ed income from other sources. In cases, if land is not detachable and it is attached to the building, at that time, land is also taxable under this ed. Annual value. We will be calculating the tax only for the annual value of the building. We will not be cal calculating the tax for the actual rent received by the owner of the house property. Annual value is determined according to the provisions of Income Tax Act Section 23 which we will see later. The assessee should not be the owner of the property. It is only the owner of the house property who can be assessed to tax under this ed. If the assessee is not the owner of this house property, any income arising out of that house property is not taxable under this ed. It will be taxed under income from other sources. If it is used for assessee's own business then it will be taxed under the ed business or profession it will not be taxed under the ed income from house property if there is any dispute about ownership then the person who is receiving the rent is supposed to pay tax if the house property is situated in the foreign country any income generated through that house property is taxable only for the ordinary resident. The subletting income which is received by a tenant will be taxed under the aid income from other sources because the tenant is not the owner of the property. As I told you earlier, we are supposed to calculate tax only for the annual value. To determine the annual value, there are several types of rental value used. So the first one is actual rent. Actual rent is the rent which is actually received from the tenant for the let out period. Real rental value is the value that is calculated out of actual rent. From the actual rent, you have to deduct those rent which is collected for the purpose of common facilities like staircase lighting, corridor maintenance, gardening, water charges, electricity charges. If you detect all those things, the balance which you get is called as real rental value. Municipal rental value is the municipal value which is assessed by the municipal corporation for calculating the property tax. Fair rental value is the value which the house can fetch when it is let out. It is based on the rent prevailing for similar type of accommodation in a same or similar type of locality. It is based on the principle that is rent prevailing in the same locality for similar sized property in the same locality. It is called as fair rental value. Standard rent is based on the rent fixed under the Rent Control Act. Expected rental value shall be determined as under. First you have to take municipal rental value 
you have to compare it with fair rental value. You have to take whichever is highest. To the highest value, you compare the standard rental value. Take whichever is less. That is called as expected rental value. The incomes which are exempted from tax. The first one is agricultural house property under section 2, subsection 1. Income from house property which is situated on or in the immediate vicinity of the agricultural land and which is used for agricultural purpose is exempted from tax. House property which is held for charitable purposes. Example, rent from shops owned by temples, churches, religious institutions, etc. Self-occupied but vacant house. In case an assessee keeps his own house self-occupied but living in a rented house elsewhere due to his employment or profession, the income from such house is taken to be nil. House used for assessee's own business or profession. There is no income chargeable to tax under this head but it will be charged to tax under business or profession. Property held by registered trade union is not to be included in gross total income. Income from house property held by hospitals or medical institutions, educational institutions, political party, scientific research institutions and local authority is totally exempted from tax. A palace which is owned by the former ruler of Indian states is exempted from tax. Two self-occupied house property of an assessee is exempted from tax. House property which is held as stock in trade and not let out during the previous year then it is not taxable under this ed. Determination of annual value before getting into the determination of annual value, let us see what does this three things mean. The first one is a vacancy period. The vacancy period is a period when tenant vacates the house and leaves the house vacant. So while taking the actual rent for calculating annual value, you should take only for the period which it is let out, not for the full year. Next one is an unrealized rent. Unrealized rent is a rent which is not actually received from the tenant. So the tenant is a defaulter and he is not paying the rent properly. To claim the unrealized rent, assessee should prove that he has satisfied the rule 4. What is rule 4? That the tenancy is bona fide, that the tenant has vacated the house or steps have been taken to get the house vacated. The tenant is not occupying any other house owned by the assessee and that all efforts to realize the rent have failed or the assessing officer is satisfied that there is no way to recover the rent. Unrealized rent of earlier year is not detectable. The third one is let out for the part of the year since it is purchased or constructed during the previous year. For example, if an house has come into existence during the previous year, in the month of September. So you should calculate municipal rental value, fair rental value, standard rent, everything from the month of September, not for the full year. Determination of annual value. Take municipal rental value, compare it with fair rental value. Take whichever is highest, to that you compare it with standard rent, take whichever is less, is called as expected rental value. From actual rent, you deduct the unrealized rent and take whichever is highest, is called as annual rental value. When there is a vacancy period, 
how to calculate the annual rental value. You have to follow these steps for calculating the annual rental value if there is a vacancy period. Step 1, compute expected rental value. Step 2, compute actual rent receivable for the let out period. Deduct unrealized rent if any. Step 3, compare expected rental value and actual rent. Step 4, if actual rent is less than the expected rental value due to vacancy, then actual rent is the annual rental value. If actual rent is more than expected rental value after detecting vacancy, then actual rent is the annual rental value. If actual rent is low due to any other reason, then expected rental value is the annual rental value. Calculating net annual value Take annual rental value. From the annual rental value, allow deduction under section 23, subsection 1, which is applicable for local and municipal taxes paid. When you deduct it, the balance which you get is called as an net annual value. So this deduction is to be done only from the annual rental value. This deduction is done only for the amount which is paid during the previous year. It is deductible only when it is paid by the assessee. If it is paid by the tenant, it is not deductible. Self-occupied house property. The house property which is self-occupied by the owner himself or by his relatives is called as self-occupied house property. Before the financial year 2019-20, an assessee can have only one self-occupied house property. But the finance bill 2019 paid way for an assessee to have two self-occupied house property. If an assessee is having more than two self-occupied house property, the other houses are deemed to be let out. Let out house property, the house property which is let out to a tenant and rent is collected from that house is called as let out house property. The rent collected is the, is the thing which is taxable under income from house property. Deduction under section 24. It is applicable both for let out house property and self occupied house property. From let out house property, first deduction under section 24, subsection 1, is standard deduction at the rate of 30% of net annual value. For self occupied house property, this deduction is not applicable since the net annual value of self occupied house property is nil. Second deduction under section 24 subsection 2 is interest on loan taken for purchases, construction or repair of the house property. So in this cases if it is taken for purchases or construction you will be taking previous year interest plus one fifth of pre-construction period interest. The net annual value of self occupied house property is nil. So deduction under section 24 subsection 2 for interest on housing loan. If it is let out house property, the purpose of the loan should be either for purchases, construction or repairs. There is no limit in the deduction. You can deduct whatever amount it may be. If it is self-occupied house property, you have to see whether the loan is taken before 1499 or after 1499. If it is taken before 1499, the maximum limit is only 30,000. Whatever may be, whether it is for purchases, construction or repairs, the maximum limit can be only 30,000. If it is taken one after 1499, if the purpose is for purchases or construction, the maximum limit is 2 lakhs. Only thing is, the SEC should prove that the construction is completed within 5 years. If it is taken for repairs, the maximum limit is 30,000. What is pre-construction period interest? It means the period starting from starting from the date of borrowing of loan and the, imme uh, the immediately preceding 31st of March to the year of completion of construction is called as pre-construction period interest. The pre-construction period interest is deductible for the subsequent five years from the date of from the year of completion in five equal installment. 
provision of arrears of rent and unrealized rent received under section 25 subsection a this is treated as deemed income the amount of rent received as an arrears from a tenant or an amount of unrealized rent realized from from a tenant by an assessee shall be treated as deemed income and it will be taxable in the financial year in which it is received or realized and it is eligible for deduction under section 25a subsection 2 30 percentage of such amount realized the balance is the taxable amount treatment of income of co-owned house property under section 26 if the property is owned by two or more person whose share are definite and ascertainable then the income from such property cannot be taxed under income of an association of persons where the house property is owned by co-owners is self-occupied each of the co-owner is eligible for deduction under section 24 subsection b for interest on money money borrowed where the house property is owned by co-owner is let out income from such property shall be computed as if the property is owned by one single person and after computing the total income from the let out property you will be dividing the share among the co-owners